all so precious. Like, life is very short. Um, it could be gone at any moment. And my motivation was to push through the upset feelings, the anger, the resentment that I felt towards life. And I just wanted to keep going. Because oh, cats. Yes. Okay, cool. okay. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Thanks to Creative Mornings and specifically to Julie for inviting me here today. Um, and thanks to Megan for sharing her story with us. I am super professional. <laughs> I have my notes here. Okay. So. Um, just, just by chance, how many people may have um, seen my TED Talk just by a raise of hands? So a couple people. So I just want to talk to you for a second. This is going to start out the same way, <laughs> okay? But I promise it's going to be different. Um, the difference today is that there's not 900 people in one room where we can't have a conversation. And I prefer to have conversations instead of just talk at you. So just for a moment, I'd like you to think about something that another maker made that affected the way that you felt or thought or made you look like this. <laughs> so I want you to think of something that, that affected you. And now, the more you talk, the better off I am. I'd like somebody to share what they thought of. And I will call on names. <laughs> yes. Um, I, what I envisioned was a um, pretty early computer generated um, piece of commercial production um, done probably in the, the early 70s, maybe 72, 73. And it was all of these, it was for um, television, Francais Un. And so its logo was TF1 and all the parts interlock. And so there was this flotilla of um, uh, primary colored TFs and ones that were just floating through space and all coming And your together. mind was like yeah, They were all coming together. <laughs> Whoa. And, and up and Fantastic. Like, yeah. Does anybody else want to share an experience? Yes. I just watched a video this morning about a girl named the Queen of Shady Robots. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, I'm a fan of her. Yeah. Well, I'll share one of those moments um, for myself. Um, I was lucky enough when I was 40 years old to go to Florence, and I knew I wanted to experience Botticelli. And so I went to the Uffizi, and I walked into the rooms fu full of the Botticellis. All these people are around, they're looking, they're talking, they're taking photos. And I instantly burst into tears, which has never happened to me before with a piece of artwork. And what I realized with Botticelli was, why I was crying was because I could see it in person, and I could see the mistakes, and I could see his vulnerability, and that he was getting through that. Um, so it just really, really hit me. Um, so now, I want you as creatives to kind of go inside yourself and think about things that you've made that you feel like, yes, this is something I want to put out in the world. This is something where I really am talking to somebody else. And that could have been you know, a poem. It could have been a dance. It could have been uh, a building. It um, can be anything. Does anybody want to share that aha? Uh -huh? Yes. I'm a videographer, and I'm currently uh, just finished a rough edit on a project called the Boyfriend Project, which is a web series um, talking about the dating experience from a woman's perspective. And it's been, it's based on a lot of true stories, so it's, we're getting a lot of really exciting feedback from people about it, and it's just, it's been years in production, and we're just like, we need to get this done, we need to get this done. 
and we're just very much looking forward to getting it out. Fantastic, fantastic. Does anybody else want to share? No? Oh, yes. I, uh, I recently made a six foot tall self portrait. Nice. It's kind of weird. I had a six foot tall self portrait hanging in my living room. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not really like all about me, so it's weird. But I do want the record to show that I didn't use money from my foundation to pay for it. So <laughs> it's actually made of uh, smaller pictures of my friend's Facebook profile photos. <laughs> oh, so wow. So I can actually say it's. it's uh, portraits of my Facebook friends and it's the network that makes me mm. um, that's fantastic so it's okay but that was that was that was interesting because I had to actually ask people's permission to use their right. portrait to make my portrait which the process was really connecting me to people more than I realized so does everybody want to come to your house and see it now yeah, you're all <laughs> <laughs> so for me I don't necessarily remember that one project. I just remember um, the first time I started feeling like that. So that was in um, kindergarten. And some really bad things were happening to me. And for whatever reason, the adults in my life couldn't listen to what I was saying. So I was able to draw. And that made me feel like I was present and that although bad things were happening, I could still make good things. Um, and this also proves that this is my natural hair color. <laughs> we didn't have Photoshop in 1973. <laughs> 1978, I guess that would be. So I'm known as a street artist. I'm, I'm not really partial to labels. I also con consider myself a disruptor, uh, an interventionist, a gift giver. Um, but I'd like to talk a little bit about some of the labels we put on outdoor work. So what's the difference between tagging, graffiti, and street art? Permission. 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 Yeah, go ahead and shout it out. Intention. Intention. What else? Audience. Audience. Perception. Perception. What does tagging usually look like? Basically just writing the name. Writing the name over and over and over, right? What about graffiti? Oh, were you going to say something? No? I just said symbols. Symbols, yep. What about graffiti? Usually there's more of a message, maybe. Okay. Usually there's a name, right? Who is going to say something? I was going to say more expression. More expression. Maybe more color. And then what about street art? Intentional. Intentional. Those are all right answers. Um, I don't think there are right or wrong answers when it comes to this discussion. Um, I think there's a lot of reasons why people are making marks in the streets. Um, I specifically make marks in the street because I want to have a conversation about where we access art, who gets to see art, and that everybody should see themselves in artwork. So when Julie, I can't see it on here, that's why I keep doing that. When Julie asked me to do this, and I was thinking about moments, and what are my favorite creative moments? Um, they definitely are those moments where I get to collaborate with other creators. So I thought, well, let me just go ahead and share some of those moments. So this um, piece is a collaboration with Ambivalently Yours from an exhibit called Dare to Be Heard that we did last year. Um, Ambivalently Yours, this is her work here and mine at the bottom. She is an um, artist based in Canada. And I was following her for a very long time before I got the chance to work with her. She has over 35,000 Instagram followers. Um, and she is an unapologetic feminist. And when people write in with quotes, then she illustrates them and posts them. This is April Tsunami. This is a collaboration that her and I did for an exhibit called Common Cosmology at uh, the Vanderelli Room. If you don't know April Tsunami, 
you need to look her up right away. She is one of the most amazing artists here in town. And she's specifically talking about the black woman's experience and how we as viewers are looking at her. This is the longest collaboration I've done to date. This is uh, a short documentary called Tiny Out Loud. Um, this is my website, so if you want to watch the movie, it's 12 minutes long. It took two and a half years to make 12 minutes. Um, the director is Andrew Ina, and the co-director was Dan Gerdeman. Um, and then that just was countless local creatives. Um, so you, if you watch this film, you'll actually get introduced to quite an amazing cast and crew of Columbus artists, including the musicians. Um, this is a project that I did with the Wexner Center of the Arts, the Godman Guild, and the Rise Boys and Girls Club. I'm getting dry mouth because I'm nervous. Um, this is um, the billboard that, it's at, that is at 4th and 5th. So the community of Wyland Park considers this the gateway to their community. And for years, they were seeing alcohol ads. And they said, we don't like this. We don't like this representation. We want to take back this billboard. And so through partnerships, they were able to have four artists come in and work with the Rise Boys and Girls Club. So we went there every Wednesday for three hours for three months. And we talked to the young minds there. Thanks. <laughs> um, and then at the end of the three months, each artist came up with their design concept that we then proposed to the teenagers and then they all voted. So mine um, is a direct, one direct experience with one young lady about gentrification and the difference between house and home. This particular piece is also a call to my fellow artists because I think when we talk about gentrification, we as artists act like we're part of the victims. But we actually need to be part of the solution. So who was in that community before we got there? And don't we have a responsibility to talk about those voices and keep those voices in those communities? This is Danny. And Danny is a student in Sydney, Australia. And I met Danny through a project where her art teacher reached out to women street artists all over the world and said, would you partner with my kids? So I said, absolutely. Um, so I was partnered with Danny. And Danny's a filmmaker. She likes film noir, which I, I think is quite funny. But because she's a teenager, right? Of course she likes film noir. <laughs> But Danny would write me these beautiful emails, and she would talk about why she was making what she was making, what she thought about what was going on in the world, what her concerns were, what was her favorite thing to do after school. Beautiful, long emails. And at the end of each email, she would say, I'm so sorry this is so long. I'm so sorry I took up so much of your time. I'm so sorry I have so many questions. And it broke my heart. Because I realized even in Sydney, Australia, we're living in a culture of apology. Have you ever heard that term before? What do, what do you think that means? That you did something wrong. It was almost like Danny was apologizing for just being. Um, and I think that that happens a lot to women. We, I, have, I have a colleague that actually ran into a table and apologized to the table. I was like, well, now we have a problem. <laughs> so I asked Danny to do more research about the culture of apology and then to pose as one of my characters' name is Ghost Girl. And then I asked her to make a bunch of saris. So she posed as Ghost Girl, sent me the photo. I made her into Ghost Girl, sent it back to her, and then she put this up, the one on the right, um, with all of her saris. I think she did a fantastic job. This is a project that I did at Fort Hayes, um, which is my alma mater. Woo. Um, this is called Words for Art. Have you ever been to the Shot Tower Gallery? Yes. Okay, if you haven't, 
it's one of the best kept secrets in Columbus. And if you work downtown, go visit that school on your lunch break. Um, the, the, one of the founding teachers there, Teresa Weidenbush, she has taught the kids how to be docents. So not only do you get to go into one of the largest galleries in town, and most beautiful in my opinion, but you get a teenage kid that takes you around and explains the artwork to you in their voice. It's pretty interesting. So anyways, this is a, a project I did called Words for Art. And what I did was I asked people to, whoever came to the exhibit, to write letters and then fold them into paper airplanes. So they could write letters to lost, one, lost loved ones, they could write letters to friends, they could be angry and tell me why they're angry. Um, and then in exchange, they were able to take a free piece of art. So they each took a block with a communication tower on it to always remember to communicate. And on the back, it, it said, kindness is freedom. So I go back to Fort Hayes quite a bit. Those are my kids. I love them. And so I wanted to know what I should do with these paper airplanes. I ended up getting over 400 letters in that large pile. And so I wanted to talk to them about what my responsibility is as an artist to do with all of these words. Do I burn them? Do I open them? Do I read them? What, what should I do? And so they thought that yes, I should open them, and yes, I should make a piece of artwork with it. <sighs> That's quite a challenge. So what I did was I started to open the letters and read them. And I'd say over 97% of these letters were full of love and kindness and beauty. So I also realized that I had a responsibility to keep them anonymous. So I started cutting out their names so that nobody could see that and just started taping them all together. And as you can see, it's about 14 feet long. Um, this is in my living room and that's my cats. <laughs> Um, and so I started to piece this all together and realize that these words were giving me such a sense of security. They were giving me such hope. And so I turned it into an extremely large security blanket and made a piece called Words of Security, which showed at the Urban Art Center um, with Creative Arts of Women. Any questions while I drink water? <laughs> No? Okay. Stephanie? Yeah. I have a quick yeah. Because uh, you have a, a lot of works that are in shows, do you ever consider them the works of art that are near or adjacent to the work that you're creating as well? Do you ever have that chance? Um, I have that chance because I usually end up curating them. Um, and so I try to do that for everybody. Um, so for me, curating is a whole different art. That I not that I, in order to get everybody to talk to each other and for you to see this piece next to this piece is an art in itself. Um, so yeah, thank you. Thanks for the question. All right, what's next? Oh, this is a project I did with the Columbus Museum of Art. Woo! Um, this is a 24-foot piece, and they wanted to bring attention to the fact that their renovation was almost done. And so they asked me to do a community piece. And at the time, my father had passed away about four or five months before this. And when that happened, I became obsessed with the universe. Um, you'll still see the universe in my work today. Um, but it, that was the only way I could connect with him. And so we invited the community to come out and give honor to anybody that they wanted to. So boy, did the community come out. Um, they wrote beautiful letters, they made symbols, they spray painted, we got a little messy on the lawn. It was fantastic. And I like to show this slide because you notice it's, it's all adults. <laughs> so, I mean, we did, we let the kids do it, you know, but they got a little bored and so they went off and played on the lawn and there's a bunch of adults standing around like, well, I think we should do this. And I think it's a great reminder that as adults, and especially as creatives, that we need to continue to play. 
and this because cats. <laughs> so one of the most difficult, oh, I didn't realize that was that small. One of the most difficult collaborations that I've done um, was with the International High School here in Columbus. This was last year. Um, and I say it was difficult because I had a, a really hard time getting the kids to trust me, getting them to believe that I really wanted to hear what they had to say. Um, in some cases, English was second, third, fourth language. Um, these kids have been moved around a lot. But in some cases, they were dignitaries' kids. Um, so we had a very large, beautiful collective of people. So it took me a long time to convince them um, to do this, but once they got into it, it took me actually a couple extra months. They ended up making beautiful work. Um, and so I'll let their words speak for themselves. I'll read them in case you can't see. It says, we are not fighting for nature. We are nature defending ourselves. Breaking news, terrorism has no religion. This particular artist, we decided to make, it's like a New York ticker, and so we did that over and over across 20 feet of wall. So you couldn't miss it. Very small, but you couldn't miss it. I am not my hair. I am not this skin. I am the soul that lives within. Don't judge a book by its cover. Just because you can't hear it doesn't mean it isn't happening. It was all supposed to be so different. And peace has no color. So, the largest community project I've done today is called Sign Your Art. And this was uh, a project that was funded by the Greater Columbus Arts Council and the Art Makes Columbus campaign. And I'm going to do something really bad and put Jamie Goldstein on the spot. <laughs> if you have never worked with Jamie Goldstein, figure out how to do that as fast as possible. She is one of the largest art warriors in this town. She's one of our biggest advocates for creatives. So get with her back there. So Sign Your Art was a project that Jamie came to me and she said, Stephanie, I want to do something at the Arts Festival. Do you have any ideas of what we could do? I said, I got this epic, epic idea. And if you know Jamie, she's a yes person. So I think she might have done a little bit like, oh, what's she going to say? <laughs> but she said, yes, what, tell me, tell me what the idea is. And so. As creatives, we live in a what-if world. So a lot of times when we're working on projects and trying to find solutions, we say what-if, what-if. So that's the best way I've learned how to explain this project, is to explain it in what-ifs. So bear with me. So what if we had some little wooden tiles with a hole that you could put a, a screw through it? And what if we put those on street signs all over the city? This pictured here is Catherine Bell Smith, who is my partner in crime, another badass lady. Um, couldn't have done it without her. This is Catherine's work. So what if we hired 64 professional artists to create what we call an anchor tile? And then what if we went to the arts festival and asked the entire community to paint tiles to go along with the anchor tiles. And so what if we put five tiles on a signpost in 64 locations someplace in Columbus? And so as you can see, we did it. Let me show you some of the examples. This is photographer David Ryan in the middle. Image manipulator Amy Librand in the middle four community tiles. Uh, poet Dion Custer Edwards. <laughs> this is a musician, Joey Hendrickson. Is that right? Okay. So you can see this is an iPod. 
And so he wrote a piece of music. So it wasn't just visual artists, it was all kinds of different creatives. He's a musician, so he wrote a song. And he put it on his tile, and we said, oh, Joey, that's going to get stolen, like, right away. And he said, I know, and I don't care, it's all good. Um, so it lasted two days, which is pretty good. And so what if we had 64 signposts all over the city, and we used Google pins to do something? So I can't see this. This is a... This is a technical thing. Where, where's Joel? Joel? <laughs> so if you could go to this. If you could go to this. Um, I can't see it. I can't see anything. Here, wait. Let's see if we can do it this way. Talk amongst yourselves. Drink some water. This is my grand finale ending, so it's worth it. So if you click oh, on that image, easy. Oh, easy. oh okay. You are you ready? Are you set up? Mm -hmm. So what if we had 64 artists, 64 signposts all over the city, use Google pins? So then, now this is my plug. So this is actually <laughs> happening again this year. Um, so if you'd like to talk more, you're welcome to volunteer in the tent with us at the Arts Festival. So we essentially tag the entire city with the word art. And I'm intentionally using the word tag because I think that there's a lot of stereotypes that are going on around words. And I want you to think about that little girl in kindergarten who didn't have anyone listening. So the next time you see a tag, you may, I, I, I don't vandalize, I don't, but the next time you see that, just for a minute think, what is that person trying to say? Who's not listening to that person? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>